What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It has been so long since I've been on YouTube, but as of recently, I have felt like I want to share more of my story with you guys about the Lord and I definitely feel like my platform should be used for him and I feel like maybe everything that I built up over the last years was made for him um, so I could show you what he's taught in my life if that makes any sense at all. So I wanted to get on here and talk more about my testimony and if you guys haven't watched the testimony video which was the last video uploaded I highly recommend that just so you guys have a full understanding of what the full story is. I will go over the testimony briefly but I feel like the last video you really get the full feel of everything. So long story short it's been about a year. I was saved and born again in the Holy Spirit about a year ago. It was last May and it is May now. My whole life has completely changed. I used to do, and what I mean by used to do, my career was on OnlyFans. That's how I made majority of my money. I was on OnlyFans. I modeled on Instagram. I did YouTube videos. I was making really good money, really good money. I ended up um, opening up my own coffee stand because I worked in coffee for years and right uh, like right after I opened up the coffee stand is when I was begging the Lord, praying to him like what was wrong with my life because I felt so lost. I was so lost and something didn't feel right. Life felt like almost, I, it almost felt meaningless. Um, I knew there was more to life but I didn't understand how to get there and I knew that something was wrong and I just I begged God show me <clears throat> show me your way and I pretty much gave my life to him I just said I can't do it by myself you take control he did exactly that he did exactly that and I never knew and I, I think I explained this in my last video. I never knew what being born again meant. And I think a lot of Christians and a lot of Catholics, because I was born Catholic, or I was born Catholic, I was raised Catholic. I never knew what being born again meant or uh, born again in the Holy Spirit or being saved. And it's all in the Bible. Um, I, if you don't know what that means, I highly recommend looking it up online, even TikTok, uh, Google, opening up your Bible and looking at the verses where it explains it again. But I just want to share my story with you guys. So let's get started on what God has taught me and what he has convicted me of and how important it is to listen to him. When you hear that voice inside of your head, when you hear God, you, you when you hear God, when you hear your conscious conscience speaking to you, it can get so loud sometimes. I think it was like a couple days after I gave my life to the Lord, I went, I woke up, went to the coffee stand in like later afternoon and both my employees were working and I walk in like normal, just dropping stuff off. And I remember, I remember I got dressed that day as I normally did, which is usually, it was, it was usually a crop top and maybe something low cut and some leggings and I remember walking into the stand already fidgeting with my crop top on like I was trying so hard to hike up my leggings so it would cover my stomach and I was like pulling down my crop top and I'm like why I wear this like every day this is like it's one of the most cute outfits I have you know I, I, I just remember thinking that as I'm walking into the stand. I'm like fidgeting with my outfit already and I walk into the stand and we have a stereo or we have a speaker that it's a Bluetooth speaker and we all listen to music on it and it's playing hip hop, rap, or R&B. That's usually what we listen to. And I remember walking into the stand and it was like everything in my ears got muffled out except for the music and I remember walking in and it was like cuss word after cuss word and it was like men talking about women so pervertedly and I remember I like I walked in as I'm like fidgeting with my my top and my leggings and then I'm listening to the music and I, I feel like I, I was just in awe I was like 
what is going on? Like, why are we listening to this music? This is so loud, it's so loud, it's, it's terrible, it's so bad. And I'm like trying to ignore it because I have no idea what's going on. And then I remember and bless my employees' hearts because I love them all. But when customers leave, sometimes we'll talk amongst each other and some cuss words will get out. And I remember the first time I heard a cuss word come out of my employee's mouth. I was shocked. And you guys have to realize this was not a choice that I made. Okay, my, my choice that I made was to give my life to the Lord. But it was not a rational decision behind me to say, I shouldn't cuss anymore. I shouldn't dress provocatively anymore. I shouldn't listen to bad music anymore. Those were never rational choices in my head. I never had to consciously be like, okay, what does the Lord like? Or what, what does it look like to live by him? I didn't make any of those choices. But immediately I was being convicted of all of these things at once. And I just remember I was like just standing there like looking around and hearing and of course my employees are still talking, laughing, having a good time and I'm just sitting here like, what do I have going on here? And so I remember changing the station. I switched it to country and that's what I've listened to my whole life. So I'm like, hey, this is going to country. And um, it's crazy to me because the cussing especially because I never really was a huge cusser but a few times some words would slip out but anybody around me could cuss I would never think twice about it ever Devin had a he kind of he's working on it but he has a pretty big sailor mouth and I never thought twice about it before guys cuss words to me they sound like screeching in my ear like it is an intoler intolerable like if somebody says a, a, a beautiful sentence and then they squeak in like an f word or an or an s word or whatever it is my whole body cringes it's it like ripples up and cringes it is the most incredible thing but it, while it was all happening i was like are you sp what's going on it was so weird but so good at the same time so that was like one of the biggest things right off the bat that God showed me was cussing. It was music because most of our modern music today is like really, really bad. And it, it, if you actually listen to the lyrics, which all of the music around me, that was bad. It sounded like it was on like an extra loud setting and where I could hear everything explicitly and it was just terrible. So I don't. So I don't cuss. I don't listen to bad music. I don't listen to satanic music or if you guys just listen to the words, I know a lot of you guys are like Taylor Swift fans. If you listen to some of the lyrics that these people are singing, look them up. Look up your favorite song from somebody like Doja Cat or Taylor Swift or Cardi B or any of them. And a lot of them are dissing jesus christ christians in general and like i said <laughs> i didn't choose to not like that music god showed me how bad it was so those are just a couple things that god has changed in my life that he's opened up my eyes to and another huge thing for me that god showed me was dressing modestly it's like i want to be modest i want to be modest it's not it was never a choice, but God just showed me that that's how it's supposed to be, if that makes sense at all. I am not gonna lie, I've struggled with it because my whole wardrobe before was crop top after crop top after crop top. I hope you guys don't think I'm crazy because it gets crazier. <laughs> it really does get more crazy. This was probably, no, I would say I want to I want to say all of them are huge changes, but another really really big thing for me was drinking. I have grown up in a family, Pol a Polish family. I don't know if that means anything to you guys. My family just says it all the time, so that's why I said that. 
but they all like we all like to get together and how we have fun is drinking that's what we've done my whole entire life i've known my parents not to be alcoholics but to get together and like binge drink in a way and when we go out we drink that's just and if you guys have followed my channel for a long time you know that Devin and i go to mexico all the time we drink we have shots I've taken you guys to the bar with me. I've taken you guys everywhere. And you guys have seen that I like, I, I used to like to drink a lot. And I wouldn't say I, I ever had a problem drinking, but I might have had a little bit of a problem with binge drinking and feeling like I needed to drink to have fun. And I never saw it as an issue because I didn't need alcohol. It was just something that when I did drink, I drank a lot. One huge thing, and I'll, I'll give you guys a story. I like stories because they're relatable, but I was being convicted by the Lord. Slow. This was more of a slow one to not drink. And I remember we, Devin and I, hadn't gone out for a while. And we were like, we should go downtown and go get a drink. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't really want to go drink a lot, but maybe I'll have like a glass of wine or something. And so we went to this bar. It was, it's not like a nasty icky bar. It was like live music bar and um, they're playing like folk music. And I don't know, it was just, it was a pretty chill bar. But I remember just sitting there with my glass of wine, my red wine that I had, and I felt terrible. I felt like I was in the wrong space. I felt like everybody around me was, and I'm not judging you guys. I, I hope you know that if you do drink, if you do any of these things, I'm not judging you. I'm just showing, I'm just telling you what the Lord has shown me. And, and sometimes what happens when the, you invite the Lord into your life and what he does. But I was looking at all these people and I'm like, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. And I didn't even drink. We were there for a few hours and it was just Devin and I, we were kind of just watching everybody and talking and whatnot. I didn't even finish my glass of wine. I gave the rest to Devin. And another example, I went to the grocery store, the other, I think it was last week, to go get alcohol for a friend. My mouth, when I'm in the alcohol aisle, starts to water up like my whole throat my mouth gets all watery because you know before you throw up you get like that feeling like that watery feeling every time i smell or think of hard alcohol it's like the most like even right now me thinking about it i feel like i could just throw up thinking about it and i have had champagne and i've had wine since i've been saved but i definitely don't want to get drunk. I definitely don't feel like drinking at all. Like, I think the last time I drank was when Devin and I got engaged and I had a glass of champagne and that was like crazy for me. I almost was like, do I need this? So that is one of the biggest things for me. I do have a lot of alcoholism, alcoholism in my family. I've had multiple people in my family pass and friends older friends pass because of alcoholism and I honestly feel like the Lord is saving me from going down that route. I feel like, not that I was addicted to alcohol, but just having it in my life and having it be something to look forward to on the weekends, I feel like he completely changed my outlook on that and he completely changed the way I look on life completely. I needed to drink at almost every friend or family get together. I don't want anything to do with it now. I want to throw up every time I think about it now. And Devin still drinks, not heavily, but you know, he'll have beer or a glass of whiskey on the weekends and I'm not judging him. I'm not saying he can't drink, but this is what God's shown me in my life. It doesn't mean that that's what, you know, you can't do in your life. I'm he like I I feel like he shows people exactly what they need in their life. So this is just one crazy thing that he's shown me. So yeah, now we have modest, well, not dressing provocatively, no cussing, no uh, profanity or bad music. 
no drinking. This is stuff that has happened in like a matter of days of me being saved. And trust me, when I go to Hawaii or when I go to Mexico and I used to get so drunk and we used to get the all-inclusive package because we like to, you know, sit back and relax and then enjoy and you know have a good time and Devin and I have amazing memories you know drinking and stuff like that but going now and being terrified of alcohol and not even wanting anything to do with it is insane to me it's a miracle in itself it truly is it truly is you guys and I know that I didn't show a lot of our weekends and a lot of like the drinking and stuff like that but it definitely was like a large part of having fun in our life and so that was one of the biggest things that God has taught me and he still is teaching me. I feel like me wanting to throw up every time I look at alcohol or am around it is something that God is teaching me again and again in that moment. Like you don't need that. That's not good for you. We don't need that in your life. So we're getting more towards the end, but this is like the biggest I think it's probably the biggest thing because it doesn't only do with me it has stuff to do with Devin as well so right after I was saved I was heavily convicted to get married if you're new to the channel my fiance now but at the time he was my boyfriend for eight years or seven years at the time seven years of dating and I was always the person to say I don't need to get married we can have kids before we're married it's just paper it's just paper like we don't need to be wrapped up in the government I was that person and I didn't want to I didn't really have a need for it and immediately I was being convicted of you need to get married and I remember this was the hardest part for me because I can't just go to Devin and be like, you need to marry me right now because the Lord is telling me we need to get married. I did sit down with, and talk with him and I told him, I said, there is an attack on families by the enemy. There's an attack on marriage by the enemy and America is making it look like we don't need marriage and it's just a piece of paper and it's not just a piece of paper Devin it is a contract between you me and God you are making a commitment to God on marriage this is a huge thing and I said yeah it does suck that the government is intertwined in marriage but you're making a commitment to God and a contract with God on on marriage with me and we become one and I told him, I said, we have to get married. We have to. I said, we've been together for seven years. And it was, it was really hard for, I think, me to come out and say that to him. Because for so long, we were on the same page of like not wanting to get married because we didn't need to. And bless Devin's soul. You guys, I am so blessed that I have Devin in my life because he completely understood. He was like, you know what, you're right. And, you know, when it's meant to be, it'll be. I also said with that, and I'm going to get very vulnerable with you guys, but, but this is just what God has told me. And he also convicted me very, very harshly about having sex before married, marriage heavily, heavily convicted me. Fought against that one because I'm like telling God like, I've been with this man for seven years and you expect him to just, me just tell him, you know, no more sex until we're married. He hasn't even proposed yet. We don't even know when we're getting married, but I was obedient. And to be quite honest, the when you know you're doing something wrong, you have like you have to take action on it. And it was still, it was getting so loud in my head that I'm like, I have, I have to talk to Devin about this. So, yeah, 
that's another thing and we are engaged now and we i was saved in may of last year and we got engaged in february we will be getting married and we couldn't be more happy and devin and i are both on the same page and that was probably the biggest thing because that doesn't only involve me that involves devin too but when you have somebody who loves you and when you're meant to be with somebody when god puts somebody in your life you have to trust God's plan. God's plan. Devin could have easily been like, screw that. I am going to find somebody else. I'm going to cheat on you. I, or, you know, like, no, I'm not doing that. You're weird. But when God has somebody for you, things work out the way they're supposed to. And you have to just put your trust in the Lord. So, yeah, you guys, I wanted to share that with you. And... It hasn't been easy. I would say the most, the, probably the hardest thing is the people who don't have a relationship with the Lord at all. I've had very, very close family members tell me I'm going through a phase. I've had people tell me I'm lame. That's not that, that's not really that harsh because I am lame, but one thing I can say is I am tremendously at peace. I have such a peace in my heart that only God could give me. Only Jesus Christ could give me. I have a peace in my heart that people yearn for. And if only the, if only you guys knew or only if they knew that all you have to do is give your life to God. I just, I wish that for everybody. I truly do. It is the most incredible feeling and I feel like I have a clear path ahead of me. I can see I have God on my side. I have Jesus Christ on my side and our society today, you guys, is poisoning us. Not only your mind, but they're poisoning your soul. There's nothing more that I want for you guys than other than to just pray. Just pray. Talk to God talk to him, ask him for help, ask him for guidance if you're confused. Like I said, everybody's experience is not the same as mine, but I needed to be taught up front on everything I was doing wrong apparently. He was like, immediately we're stopping all of this. So I couldn't be more grateful and I definitely think it's hard when people see you and perceive you as one way and then a year later I'm completely opposite. I do the complete opposite. It's been an amazing experience, you guys. I I could not thank the Lord enough for what he's done in my life. If you resonate with one of these topics, whether it's modesty, sex before marriage, cussing, drinking, whatever it is, comment what you want me to talk about out of all of the subjects and I will do another video on it. Jesus is still working in my life. I'm still learning a lot more. Some things are a lot more slow, and the way Christ would do it is is how I live now. So, anyways, you guys, I thought I'd just share that with you. I hope you enjoyed the story, and I hope you, you know, I hope you get got something from it. And I just want you to know that there is more to life than there's more to life than what what the world is wanting you to believe. Put your trust, put your faith, give your life to God, give your life to Jesus Christ, and you will be set. You will be set. It's not always easy, especially if you're somebody who is a people pleaser or is scared about what other people think. It will be hard for you, but it's worth it. And yeah. Anyways, you guys, if you have any questions or or anything, just comment down below. Message me. I love reading your guys' comments and messages. So, anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.